So one of the things that I really liked about watching Anas is that he's someone who obviously has a distinct plan. He knows exactly what he's going to do when he drops at this place, what his mid-game rotation looks like. The initial plan that he's got is basically all set out for him, and I really like that about the way that he sets up to play. So he plays nice and cautious, essentially hits this guy with a beam, and King Kyle goes down. But the rotation he takes after getting that beam is quite interesting because it shows his priority. It's not necessarily to farm up. It's not necessarily to go and kill the guy who's just left. His priority is quite obviously getting a Parasite. And obviously, the Parasite has been so powerful the last couple of weeks. And there's screams to remove it. But that just shows, you know, a tier 1 player's thought process about getting something that quickly. Another really important point is that he pulls zone. That's always a nice thing. Just a reminder, we are reviewing the complete last game he played here. This was him going into his last game, probably knowing that he was playing for first place at this point. <coughs> He does pick himself up a Llama, which is obviously game-changing. And then if you look down here, you can obviously see that he will be getting himself a drop as well. So not only does he have Chug Cannon, he has a guaranteed drop, which is a guaranteed pad, and he's got a Scar. So he's really set up to do well at this point. He's got a Parasite. He's got everything he needs to do well. It's just about putting it together. And what I want this video to be about is essentially how he puts it together. So he sets himself up nicely. What does his mid game look like to set himself up? What does his end game look like to actually pull the win together? And what does he actually do late game to get that win? So as I said, he's pulled first zone. So what I'm wanting to see here is how he looks to set himself up. Is it just pure patience sitting on edge of dead side? Uh, what's his thought process? And here you go. Yeah, so straight up, straight away you can see it's going to be just patience. Let's box myself up in a pretty decent spot. It's, an, it's on dead side of first, but it's also not complete edge. So he doesn't have to rotate far if it pulls far for second zone. So he's just going to sit here and wait. This is a solo cash cup classic. This is also showing the beauty of the new cars which go fast and the wheels which allow your fast cars to go fast across non-road terrain. Essentially, he can sit here on a relatively edged piece of land and not necessarily worry about the next rotation he has to make because he can get there so fast. So straight away, as zone pulls, you can see his first thought is to, okay, let's get straight in. And again, I'm immediately looking for him to find a nice piece of terrain to box up on. Doesn't necessarily need to look for somewhere that's mat conservative because he's got so many mats as is. It's all about getting into a good spot where every rotation after this is hopefully relatively easy. He's also got two pads and a chug cannon and a parasite. So if he wastes 500 materials through the mid game, it's not that worrisome because he's got a, a pad for half half if he needs it, a pad for first moving if he pulls half half and second moving, and then the parasite helps you conserve mats through late game as well. So immediately putting himself into this position here, it's relatively central. It's nice and high if he potentially needs surge later. And it also means that any rotation to third zone is really easy. So again, all about being patient now, sitting, waiting, making sure he's not taking any unnecessary edits, just sitting, waiting, and seeing what next zone looks like. So again, a relatively easy rotation for him. Looks like he's going to pre-scout it and then make it, but we'll wait and see what happens. So it looks like here he's going to make another little box for his car to set up nice and safely in, or to at least get it prepared to move when he's looking to move it. It's not an awkward set of movements. But it looks like he's not in a rush here. He's going to look ahead, he's going to scout ahead, being in a car this fast with wheels like this means that he can scout this or scoot, scoot across this terrain so fast. It's not a worry about how fast he has to make this rotation. It's just about making sure that he knows what he's moving into, where he wants to box up next to, and go from there. Having an idea about what you're moving into prior to doing it is a really good thing. Now he makes his rotation. Really easily done. And he just ditches his car and then looks to box up. Full metal, of course, and look at where he is. Basically, full center third is going to be very close to or in fourth zone. What he might need to be thinking about here is a little bit of surge if 57 holds. But aside from that, he's probably pretty good to go. So more sitting and waiting, being patient. This is all what solos is about. Patience, mentality, that sort of stuff. Another thing for him to note here, only 49 alive. Surge is now a non-worry. Uh, moving zone surge and solos doesn't tend to hit and if it does it's not a worry but looks to move quickly here I like that the, the quicker he moves when he has the chug cannon the quicker it can recover for the times it'll actually need it through late game so getting in early using that fast is, is a smart idea I really like that so it's always looking that's one of the things that I constantly talk about on my channel the idea of the tier one player never stopping looking for kills looking for opportunities to pick something up so blowing that car up there 
potentially could have given him, you know, a wildfire spread that goes through the rest of the lobby there and potentially gives him some, some, some good damage. So half-half doesn't pull far. Now I've said this before as well. If I'm ever in a scenario where I don't have to use my pad for a half-half rotation, there is no way I'm looking to use it. The reason being, it is so effective in, in moving zones to use your to use your pad that by using it in half to get to half-half zone, I feel like you're sort of wasting it. And he, especially in a situation like this where he's so close, there was no way he was ever going to use it. But I think that's important to note. In solos, you never want to try and use your pad. You always want to try and recycle or find a way to make that rotation to half-half without using your pad. Because using it in moving zones is where you get the most out of it. So again, sitting. I think I would have liked for him to be a little a little bit off the ground here. When you sit on the low ground in these sorts of you know half-half scenarios, you do tend to be surrounded by a lot of players. I think I would have liked to see him potentially get up a couple of layers once he got into zone. So zone's nice and close to him. This means that his first moving is going to be basically done on zero mats because he can basically get the entirety of first moving on one pad. Whatever he doesn't get, he can then use with his parasite and maybe use, you know, 20, 30 builds. After that second moving, he'll get the majority of that on his second pad and then use, you know, builds for the rest of the go. But he should only use up the majority of his builds probably as he's moving into third moving, at which point he'll have got a serious chunk of placement points. Now, a lot of solos does come down to that sort of RNG. Do you have a pad? Do you have a parasite? Was there a chance for you to even get a parasite with where you land, just depending on where they decided to put them for the season? There's all sorts of, you know, there's all sorts of scenarios that you've got to think about and consider for solos, and RNG definitely does have an effect. But he does use his pad, goes nice and late, scouts ahead of time, see if there's any way that he can reuse anything. And I think it looks like he found another place to reuse a pad, and he did. Now, by reusing a pad there, he just gets more airtime. And the more airtime you get, the more you see the battlefield sort of develop in front of you. And the more you have selection in terms of places to land. Great play from him there. You can see he's still got one pad left. It also means that when you get more airtime, you essentially get to get further into zone. And by getting further into zone here, it means that he is basically guaranteed to get this entirety of first moving on bugger all mats uses his pad there again and it looks like he's going to make a play for height i'm surprised by that use of the pad i don't think it was necessary uh, at all actually i think he probably could have sat where he was and got much more use out of uh what it was when he knew where second zone was pulling but he's essentially ej dashing through his, his way through here and now it's all about when he needs to be aggressive for his refresh goes for it nice and early nice cautious play not overly sending it for the mats not deciding to get in unnecessarily and then he's got the jump pad play for an easy height take wow so essentially seeing how perfectly placed height was below uh, above him to make that as a 35 meter jump i'm not too sure what it is with a parasite with the low gravity or if it affects it at all but that's a that's a really good play from him there and that's essentially about him holding height successfully putting nice pressure on he's got lots of materials if he can pick up these mats here there you go that secures him the win that one kill there secures him the win 100 he's got he's now got over 600 mats he can basically play height nice and easily here got lots of health he's got the chug cannon for heal off he's ready to go just constant pressure constant pressure that's exactly what you want to see when you're on height if you're a height player it's all about making sure you've got enough ammo leading into late game you never want to be trekking over the top of people's builds shooting with your shotgun that just tells people below you that you're easy to take hide off of. Still got plenty of mats for him to use here. And he's doing everything right. He's trying to create angles. He's playing really high, yes. But he's also making sure that he's, he can see see enough. He's playing right to the edge of zone, getting some nice angles in, or as, you know, as close an angle as he can while staying nice and established up on height. And again, it's just constant pressure. That's all it's about when you get to this stage of the game. He's got so much ammo he can just afford to keep on spraying. Cammy looks to challenge him for height. being nice and cautious and that's the thing that parasites need to go for that helmet ability where they can essentially just tank whatever they need to it's just not it's just not good and he does win the gunfight there at the end nice and easy 